ready for the boogeyman. You ain't ready for the boogeyman to ride. Justin Hawkins rides again. Again. Good day to you. It is I, Justin Hawkins. This is Justin Hawkins Rides Again, my YouTube channel. <laughs> Excuse me. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, sign up for the alerts. Um, I'm going to be discussing something, a much maligned uh, effect or a process. I don't know how to describe it, really. Um, a crutch that a lot of producers use. It's called auto-tune. You know when people sort of criticise stuff and they go, oh, yeah, it's all right, but it sounds a bit auto-tuned. I think it's become... It's just, it's just like the, the first resort for the lazy producer or the pop producer. An audio processor introduced in 1997 uh, and is a registered trademark of Anteres Audio Technologies. Technologies. Um, Auto-tune sometimes can be quite effective on bass, you know. Some people find it difficult to tune basses, but uh, if you really want something that sits in the mix, just apply a very light sprinkling of auto-tune and it's fine. But the trouble is, people use it on voices. And that's where all of the character comes from, isn't it? It's like the fact that you're not on the money. Also, this whole part of your anatomy, head, chest, belly, everything, that, that's the soundboard that resonates when you, when you create, create a, a sound of your vocal cords. I think it, I mean, obviously, it, the origin of it is here, but in the same way that when you hit a piano key, the, the hammer that touches the string, that's the origin of the sound. And then the soundboard on the underside of the piano, if it's you know, a grand piano or the, at the back of a upright. That's what resonates and gives it the sort of timbre and all the other stuff you need for it to sound amazing. That's in your body. But the trouble with auto-tune for me is you can hear that when someone's used it because it reduces the bandwidth of the thing as part of the process. That's a byproduct of, of its original sort of intended purpose. And it reduces it and makes it sound a little bit nasally. And sounds a bit robotic and takes away all of the sort of humanistic character of the original vocal performance. That's why people get upset about it. Um, remember that Cher song? When it sort of snapped like that. And it was used as an actual effect as opposed to, you know, something to correct a problem or, or to you know, tighten something up. It was actually used in a really obvious way. to great effect, as an effect. Um, anyway, it was launched by Andy Hildebrand, a PhD research engineer who specialised in stochastic estimation theory and digital signal processing. I suppose that's part of the cleverness of auto-tune. It's like it has to sort of try and guess what note it is you're going for. I mean, I've heard singers that are so bad that even on the, on its highest setting, the Antares auto-tune doesn't even know what note that person was going for, and it snaps to the wrong one. So it kind of has to analyse the note, decide, I suppose, what is supposed to be, based on what the nearest port of call would be within any given sort of scale or mode, and then apply the correct amount of pitch shift to it to bring it to, into line with what it thinks you're supposed to be trying to do. There's a lot of processing going on. Anyway, here's some more about the history of it. It was originally intended to disguise or correct off-key inaccuracies, allowing vocal tracks to be perfectly tuned, despite originally being slightly off-pitch. I like a vocal to be off-pitch. I actually think the, those Led Zeppelin records wouldn't have been the same if he wasn't singing out of tune. You know, I think, for example, Florence, out of Florence and the Machine, Florence of... Florence... Her voice is... I think it's sharp a little bit sometimes and that gives it some excitement and part of its character um, and also you can hear how robust it is and I remember I was talking about Willow's voice and how it's like farmer's market apple juice well I think when you have Antares audio technologies doing auto-tune and it's and it's set too high it's yes it's perfectly in tune but it loses all of its sort of roundness it becomes like a spiky robot-y type thing which some people like no not me of course but some people like it um, the processor slightly shifts pitches to the nearest tu true correct semitone um, the 1998 share song Believe popularised the technique of using auto-tune to distort vocals which became known as the share effect imagine 
having such a huge hit that the vocal processing technique was named from that point forward after you. Wonderful. Um, Radiohead used auto-tune on their 2001 album Amnesiac to create a nasal, and I'm putting this in inverted commas, nasal, depersonalized sound, and to process speech into melody. You know when you have like... um. On, uh, what's it called, ELO's Mr. Blue Sky, that really brilliant part after the guitar solo and after this, well, another, after a couple of choruses, three choruses, I don't know when it happens, but it goes, Mr. Blue Sky, Mr. Blue Sky. That's actually a vocoder as opposed to auto-tune, but it's quite, I wonder if it works in a similar sort of way. The way, of, the way a vocoder works is you have... Um, Something that creates the synthesis, or it's you have two different parts of the process actually. One of them is called the carrier, and that can be like a synthesizer sound or whatever, whatever you want to provide the uh, harmonic information. And then you have uh, the modulator, which is the voice. Um, and when you say something like Mr. Blue Sky, or I am a robot, or it's so whatever the share lyric would be. Anyway, let's say Mr. Blue Sky. So that's the that's the modulator. And I think what it does is it analyzes the sort of um, EQ elements of, of your spoken word and applies f filters to the carrier to so that it's like the when you, what's it called when you do that? When you enunciate with your mouth, it applies those, it uses filters to apply the same kind of equalizational modifications to that. So this ends up sounding like a voice, but with the perfect sort of synthesized patch or guitar thing, whatever you play through it, sounds like a robot voice. I wonder if it's similar to that, because, you know, something's happening to the sound of it, and it's, it's sucking the life out of it. In 2018, music critic Simon Reynolds observed that autotune had revolutionized popular music, calling its use for a use for effects the fad that just wouldn't fade its use is now more entrenched than ever at the 51st grammy awards in early 2009 the band def cab for cutie made an appearance wearing blue ribbons to protest against the use of auto-tune in the music industry i didn't know about that that's quite funny and um, christina aguilera appeared in public in los angeles on august the 10th wearing a t-shirt that read auto-tune is for pussies yeah, some people like Christina Aguilera doesn't use it. I know that um, Alicia Keys doesn't use it. She's often flat, actually, which is quite interesting to listen to in a, you know, in a cultural vacuum such as the one we exist in when everything's perfect and sanitised, homogenised to the point where you can't recognise one singer from another because they've got so many effects on their voice. Somebody who sings flat is actually just a welcome, like a breath of fresh air for your ears, isn't it? Um, opponents of the plug-in have argued that auto-tune has a negative effect on society's perception and consumption of music. I suppose it is a little bit like those unrealistic pictures that people post of themselves on certain social media platforms where they're so perfect that other people just look at it and go, my life is shit compared to that. I mean, I wonder if some singers listen to auto-tune vocals and go, I'll never sing that in tune. I might as well not bother singing. So yeah, maybe it is dangerous. I don't know. There's a time and a place for it. If you're trying to get a demo off the off your laptop, quick as you can, and uh, your voice is a bit ropey, then sure, tidy it up. If you're going to use it on absolutely everything, or do that thing that Kanye did where it just snaps to the note and sounds bloody awful, then, uh, yeah, I don't care, really. Do you care? Use the comment section below. Tell me if you care. Auto-tune is actually here to stay, um, but I think the use of it separates the men from the boys. Know what I mean? Not that, you know, sorry, that was a bit toxic, wasn't it? You know what I mean, though. Separates the wheat from the chaff. Let's say that. Justin Hawkins writes again. Would it be funny if I sang it perfectly in tune now and it was obviously auto-tuned? Well, it ain't going to be like that. Again. Don't forget to like, subscribe, sign up for the alerts and watch one of these two videos. And do not auto-tune yourself. Sing from the heart. That's enough for us. Cheers.